Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Make sure you buy 2020 edition. Always make sure that the book is in front of you as you're working with me. Today we are on page number 478. Turn to it. Page number 478. The very first problem that you will see there is number 29. If at the end of the video you find it helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me, you can always get hold of me by sending me an email at kashwaniprep at icloud.com or simply by visiting the website kashwaniprep.com. Let's take a look at the very first one. Here we are given an equation of a line of best fit. The equation looks something like this. I already have it on the blackboard. And what is the question asking? That I did not put down on the blackboard. What does the line of best fit predict about the increase in the minimum wage over the 70 year period that is depicted in the graph? And the graph looks something like this. It's not necessary that we do the exact precise job, but uh, it looks uh, I don't know why I even bothered to put it in there because we really don't need the graph. What we need is this equation right here. That's the line of uh, best fit here. And, if, and since, because, since it shows us by the period of 10 years, 10 year period since 1940, so this will be 1950, 1960, so on and so forth, so 10 year period, let's multiply this coefficient by 10. And I'll tell you what that, what that tells us. So 0 0.096 by times 10, this part right here, the, co the the slope, it tells, if you multiply that, it comes out with 0.96. It tells us that every every 10 years, minimum wage minimum wage goes up by about a dollar. What this equation tells us is that on average, every 10, 10 years in the U.S., minimum wage has gone up by about a dollar, or according to this equation, 96 cents. Let's see what the answer choices are here. Number number 29 it was. Each year between 19, 1940 and 2010, the average increase in the minimum wage was... So they, they, they're going by one year, and the answer is in fact A. So instead of 10 years, if you want to talk about one year, every one year, it goes up by about 0 0.96 cents every year on average, which is approximately, which, because you cannot, you cannot have 9.6 cents, so it's approximately a dime, approximately 10 cents per year. And that's the answer choice A. On average, every year, what this line of, the line of best fit tells us is that the minimum wage is going up by about a dime every year. Let's look at the next one. Number 30. In number 30, we have another scatter plot. Yes, I'm just looking at answer choice B, C, and D in the one that we just finished, number 29, just to make sure there was nothing in there that would confuse you. Uh, B is ridiculous, it's just ludicrous, it's talking about 49 cents. C and D, the answer was A. Number 30. So we have a scatter plot. that shows the sales on y-axis and temperature T on x-axis. So let's put it as best as we can. And instead of plotting every single point, which is not what I'm going to do here, it's a linear fit, it's a linear equation that they're arriving at, which means even if we just have two points, just two points alone, if you can locate, that's what you should do in the exam. If they, even if they give you 20 different points all over the place, just locate the two points, your choice, something that fits, co comes closest to the line of line that they're showing us, or in the ideal world, two points that happen to exactly fall on the line, and that's all you need. Do you understand? And if they're a little bit farther apart, that actually helps. You don't want two points just close to each other. So I found two such points. One was the beginning point. So here we have 10. 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 12, 
14, 16, 18, and 20. But of course, you will not do this in a real exam. This takes time. And it begins with 300. And what you, if you look at it carefully, it shows here that at 12, at 12, so here we have 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 400, 500, so a little under 500 at 12. There's a point right there. If you look at the graph carefully. Another point that, that I found there that actually comes very close to a line, see if I can find it, was that uh, at 22 and 800, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right here. And at 22. There we go, we have our line. It looks something like this. I'm not going to continue because I don't want to ruin my thing there. And that's all. And there are some and there are some points around it. It doesn't matter where they are, there are some points around it. And that's what it is. Alright, we haven't begun the work yet. Let's begin then. Question is which of the following could be the equation? They're giving us four equations, and our job is to find the one which could be the equation. Let's start with answer choice A logically. A says D is equal to 0 0.03t plus 402. Now what I want you to concentrate, it's always a good idea in a situation like this, as I already said, to work with intercept. Always locate if you can either x-intercept or y intercept as I told you in the past. It makes life easier. Here, they do not give us the intercept, but we can always find our own by extending it. So I'm going to extend this line and you'll see, if you extend it line, just yourself, you'll see it's somewhere here. When, when, it is temper when the temperature is 10, the sales are $400. $400. I'm going to use that point and see if it, if it fits here. So when T is equal to 10, you put it in here, 10 times something, and it's, it looks like around 400. So right now I'm not going to do something with it, we're just going to keep it. But it will help us eliminate some answer choices. Let's look at answer choice B. B says 10 times T plus 402. There you go. This, this, this is ridiculous. Because if you use that point, T is equal to 10 here. 10 times 10, 10 times 10 is 100 plus 402 is more than 400. It's more than 400. Because it's supposed to be 400. It's almost 500. 10 times 10 is 100 and then 402, that's 500. The graph still tells us that temper when temperature is 10, cells are supposed to be 400. B is not the answer. Let's look at C. Let's look at C. C, you'll find that it is just as ridiculous. C says... And as I've told you, as I've told you many times in the past, that uh, when you're doing it by yourself, you don't have to write everything out. It goes through very fast. It go. It can go through very fast in a matter of seconds. I'm not going to write everything out to tell me that this is more than 400. Of course, the bloody thing is more than 400. It's 33 times 10. When you put in this point here, we're putting the coordinates of this point, which is 10 and 400. It does not come out to be 400. It's going to be 330 plus 300. 330 plus 300 is not 400. Nowhere close to it. The answer is not D. Was it D? I, did I write down the wrong letter? Yes, that was answer. that was C. The answer is not C. The answer is not C. Let's look at D. D says is 33, 33T plus 84. Let's see what happens now. If you put in T is equal to 10 here, 33, if you put in 10 here, it's going to be 330 plus 84. 330 plus 84, 4, 11. There you go. It is around 400. It's supposed to be around 400. It is around 400. So the answer is either A. Answer is either A or D. Let's get rid of C. At this point, at this point, put in another point. Another point is right here. 22 and 800. I'm just going to use that. And you can clearly see without doing any work at all, because of, because of the fact that the slope is so small, the slope is supposed to be more than one. You can tell by looking at it, slope is more than one. So every time it goes up by two degrees, everything every time it goes up by two degrees, it goes up by as you can see, slope is more than more than two, it's more, almost more than around fifty, or at least more than twenty or thirty. Actually it's thirty-three. Slope is thirty-three. But it's definitely more than one. That slope is 0 0.03. That's that is not the right answer. And you can tell also but just by looking at this point, when you put in twenty-two for here. 
it's not going to take you plus the 400, it's not going to take you all the way up to 800 because the coordinates of this point, coordinates of this points are 22 and 800. So we got 402 here, that quantity is not going to give us 400. The answer is D. The answer is D. And we can quickly verify this thing if you like. Again, D says 33 times T plus 84. And we can, we can put the coordinate of that one. 33, 33 times 22, 33 times 22, 22 times 3 is 66, 6, carry 6, and 20, 22 times 3 again is 66, 66 plus 6, 66 plus uh, 4 would be 70, this is 72, 72 and then another 84, there you go, 810 which is what we have about, answer is D. That was number 30. Let's go to 31. In 31 we have a we have a circle with the center HK and radius radius we are told is 10. The question is what's the value of k? So let me first let me first uh, reproduce a picture on the on, on the blackboard before we worry about it. So here is our circle and let's do the let's do the x and y axis. I'm going to do it in a different color. X and Y axis, let's see how they plot it. Idea. So here is our X axis somewhere here, and here is our Y axis. So far, so good. Let's put in everything that is given to us. It tells us the coordinates of this point right here is 20, 0. Coordinate of this point is 4, 0. And the center center is H and K. Center should be in the center. It would be nice if the center happened to be in the center. That looks a little bit better. H, K. And the question is, what is the value of K? Let's find out, shall we? Enough of the talk. You will find, now that, we have, now, that, now that we have set it up, you will find actually this, this problem will go very fast. It's very simple, very straightforward. If you look at it from here to here, from here to here, the x coordinate is 4 and x coordinate is 20, which means this distance right here, this distance right here must be 16. Must be 16. Let's draw a triangle. Let's draw a triangle and see what happens. If you draw a triangle and you drop a perpendicular, if you drop a perpendicular, this side happens to be 8. This side happens to be 8. And how much you suppose this side is? Let's give them names so we can talk about them. A, B, C. This, this triangle A, B, C. A, B, C. And let's call it D. So A to D was, twen was 20 minus 4. That was given to us. The x coordinate is 20, x coordinate is 4. So A to D is 16. And therefore half of that, half of that, because we are bringing it from center to the, to the, a, to the outer edge, it, it cuts into half. This is 8 and this is 8. This is 8, A to C. How much do you suppose A to B is? A to B, I hope you're able to see. A to B, I hope you're able to see that that's the radius. And we are told what the radius is. Radius is 10. So here is our triangle ABC. Our triangle ABC looks something like this. This is 10. This is 8. And we're trying to figure out B to C. B to C. How much do you suppose B to C is? It's a straightforward, simple 3, 4, 5 triangle. This is 4 times 2, this is 5 times 2, so this got to be 3 times 2. It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. This distance is 6, which is what K is. K is, is the center here, which is the distance from the x-axis. Distance from the x-axis, that's what it measures. K is equal to 6. That's all. 
That's what k measures. k measures this distance, vertical distance from the x-axis. Obviously, you know that. I don't know why I'm looking big first. So that is 6, because it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. We know this side is 8, we know this side is 10. And if you didn't, if you didn't see this thing as 3, 4, 5 triangle yourself, you can do out the Pythagorean theorem very easily, because obviously this is a right angle triangle, because we are dropping the perpendicular. Just do it out. 100 minus 64, you will see that is 36. That's 31. Thirty-two. Thirty-two. Thirty-two says line L has y intercept of negative thirteen and is perpendicular to the line y is equal to negative two third x. We are further told that the point point ten six lies on L. The question is what is the value of B? This line goes through this point 10, 6. This can be, because I don't see any B anywhere in the bloody problem. It's not 10, 6, it's my bloody handwriting. It is not a 6, that's a B. It goes through points whose coordinate, x coordinate happens to be 10, y coordinate happens to be B, and the question is how much is B? Let's get going, shall we? So we are dealing with here two lines that are perpendicular to each other and it will make our life easier if we give these two lines names so that we can keep them separate in our work. Do you understand? Which is why, as you notice, I left room here. Let's call this one, this, let's call this line L1. And we are told that line L1 has y-intercept of negative 13 and it's perpendicular to a line, this line, let's call this L2. And it's perpendicular to line L2 whose equation happens to be y is equal to negative two-third, we are told that point 10b lies on L1. Let's begin, shall we? Let's start the work then. So we'll begin our work with L2 right here. And we'll keep in mind that 10b falls on L1. Let's keep a note of it and let's put it aside. So the second equation, which happens to be perpendicular to the first se second line, which happens to be perpendicular to first line, has has this equation, second second sec second line, which implies if L two has this equation, then that implies that the slope of the second line, m two m is for the slope, must be right here. That's the slope, negative two third. And because they are perpendicular, and because L1 and L2 are perpendicular, the product of their slope, the product of their slope, m1 times m2, has to equal negative 1. That is the property, which means that if the slope of the second line is negative 2 thirds, the slope of the first line must be positive 3 halves. Must be positive 3 halves. There you go. We look, so now we can figure out the equation of the line. The equation of the line must be, therefore, therefore, L1 must be, must have equation of, let's put it a little bit, a little bit to the side, must have an equation of, so that it lines up properly. Therefore, L1 must have an equation of y is equal to its slope, which is positive 3, three halves, x plus the y-intercept, which we are told is negative, thir negative 13. There you go. Now we have the equation of L1. L1 has this equation. Let's pick it up from the top. Because we know it has a y-intercept of negative 13. We don't have to do any work to figure it out. We are told it's negative 13 right there. So it's a slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form which is y is equal to mx plus b. The b is the y-intercept. Let's pick it up from the top. 
all you have to do now, we have our equation. We have our equation. All we have to do is substitute the coordinates of the point that falls on L1, which is 10 and B. Put it in here and solve for B. So let's do that. Y is equal to 3 half X minus 13. And Y is 10. Y coordinate is 10 equals 3 half B minus 13. And we are so B is the Y coordinate of the point. And we are solving for B. I messed it up. We are solving for B. That is correct. We are solving for B, but I messed it up in my in, in my in my lack of concentration. Ten is the x coordinate. Make sure you pay attention in the exam. Don't go around doing stupid things that I do. Essentially, follow what I do and just don't do anything that I do, and you'll be fine. Ten is the x coordinate. 10 is the x-coordinate and b is the y-coordinate. Oh, there you go. We don't even have to do any flipping around or anything. b is already there. We just have to solve for it. So, there we go. 10 and 2. 2 is going to go away with 10. That is 5. 3 times 5 is 15. 15 minus 13 is 2. There you go. b is equal to 2, which is what we were looking for. b is equal to 2. Let's finish the very last problem on the page. So, we are done with it. The answer is 2. B is equal to 2. Number 33. Here we have the R factor we are told. And here are we have blood types. A B, A, B, and O. Positive and negative. 33, 9, 3, 37, 7, 2, 1, and X. Now we're going to put down the question on the board that is given to us, okay? But that's the chart we are given to us. We don't have to worry about what these things mean. I don't know what they mean, but it doesn't matter to us. I, I don't, the reason I put down R factor is because I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's rhesus, I'm not sure about it, so that's why I call it the R factor. That way nobody's wiser that I'm stupid. Do you understand? So here's the question. It says that the odds of choosing, the odds of choosing a person with blood type B this is this part is important among among those with negative R factor with negative R factor is one nine negative R that is important to be that we understand that I put down this uh, this nice table on the, on the top, but now I'm, I realize that, that I'm going to have to erase it. This is what, let me first put down what we need here, and then I'm going to redo it on the top. This is what is known as conditional probability. It is, we are trying to figure out the odds of choosing somebody who happens to have a blood type of B, but that's not enough. That's not enough. The blood type of B would be these two people here, 9 and 2. There are 11 people who have a blood type of B. But that's not what we're talking about here. It says, what are the odds of picking somebody among these people who, has, who happens to have a blood type of B given the fact that he has a negative R factor? Among those with a negative R factor. This is called conditional probability. This is what we're looking for. What are the odds? What, what is the probability of choosing a person with a blood B given that he has a negative R factor. That that is con given that how it's read. Given that he has a negative negative R factor, and we are told that this is equal to one ninth. This is what we are told. We have to work with this thing and figure out what that X is. So let's figure out how many such people are there. How many such people are there who have a blood type of B with a negative R factor? 
Negative water factor blood type B, there's only two people. And how many people are all together? How many people are all together who, who, who would qualify as having negative blood type? For negative blood type, we have we have seven people here, seven two people here, one person here, extra people here. There you go. Out of these people who have negative blood type, two of them are such that they have a blood B. Let's do it on the top. The same information, the same information. Odds of picking somebody with a blood type of B, given that he has a negative R factor, is equal to 1 9th, we are told. And we know there are two such people, right here, there are two such people who have a negative blood, negative R factor and a blood type of B, among, among 7 plus 2 plus 1 plus X. 7 plus 2 plus 1 plus X. And there is your equation. And the rest is very easy. Now it's a very simple linear equation. We solve it and we're done. Let's do it. 1 9 over 1 9 equals 2 over 2 plus 7 is 10, 10 plus x. Let's cross multiply. So when you get 10 plus x equals to 9 times 2, which is 18, and therefore x is equal to 8. There we go. The question was, what's the value of x? Which was the same question as, how many people do we have with the blood type of O and a negative factor and a, and, and a, fact, and a negative factor? The answer is there are eight such people in order for this to be true, where the odds are one nine to picking somebody with a blood type of B with a negative factor. That was the end of the page. We're not going to start a new page, obviously. I'll see you tomorrow and we'll pick up our story where we left off. If you again wish to get hold of me, send me an email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright, bye now.